Updating the metric of transportation impact, benefits of BMT. SB 743 directed OPR to replace LOS with an updated metric of transportation impact. OPR chose vehicle miles traveled, or VMT, for a number of reasons. First, VMT provides a good umbrella metric for transportation impacts. It's correlated with a number of impacts to the environment and to human health. Second, VMT is easy to assess. It takes about one-fifth of the time, resources, and expenditures compared to assessing LOS. And VMT is already being assessed in CEQA documents. VMT assessment is the first step in air quality, greenhouse gas, and energy analyses in CEQA. Third, in California, even aside from SB 743, existing case law already suggests projects should be assessing VMT. Fourth, we need to take action to contain VMT growth today in order to achieve our long-term GHG emissions reduction goals. For example, when deep GHG emissions reductions will be needed in 2030 and 2045, we cannot decide then to move development to more central locations, to reconfigure streets to provide better connectivity, or to add walkable retail centers into, large housing, into a large housing development. Such features must be included now as those developments are being built. VMT mitigation helps ensure that happens. Fifth, using the VMT metric provides streamlining for large swaths of infill development and an array of transportation projects. For example, OPR recommends presuming development within a half mile of transit less than significant. OPR also recommends mapping existing low residential VMT areas and low office VMT areas and presuming those types of projects in those locations less than significant. For a sense of the scale of streamlining that will result, Within the Southern California Association of Governments, which includes nearly half of the state's population, these two streamlining pathways together would obviate the need for transportation analysis for 56% of projected future residential development. Locally serving retail, which tends to reduce the distance one needs to travel to shop, can also be presumed less than significant. Transit projects, which tend to reduce VMT, are also streamlined, as are bicycle and pedestrian projects. Livability enhancements and street safety improvements, such as road diets and traffic calming, are also streamlined. In the remaining cases, which are not eligible for streamlining and VMT assessments must be undertaken, the modeling is, again, approximately one-fifth of the effort and cost of LOS modeling. Reducing per capita VMT will lead to substantial improvements in human health. California today sees over 21,000 premature deaths each year resulting from physical inactivity. Achieving our near-term mode share targets for increased biking, walking, and transit use would reduce premature deaths by about 2,100 per year. That represents billions of dollars per year in prevented premature death and disability in California. Use of VMT as the metric of transportation impact will play an important role in achieving that mode shift and realizing those health benefits. Crashes are also a major impact to public health in California and across the U.S., Recent research shows that high VMT is impeding our efforts to reduce crash fatalities and serious injuries. Despite our high standards for road safety and high levels of investment in public funds in the name of safety, our traffic fatality rate is more than double most other industrialized countries. That discrepancy is largely due to the greater amount of driving we do and the higher speeds needed to get between destinations that are more spread out. The discrepancy in traffic fatality rates is even starker within the U.S. between compact, low VMT areas and sprawling areas. Research comparing the most compact counties to the most sprawling ones shows nearly a five-fold difference in traffic death rate. Reducing VMT will also broadly improve outcomes for the environment, including both reducing emissions directly from vehicles and reducing impacts from high VMT development. By building less high VMT sprawl and more compact low VMT infill, we also reduce building energy use and water use for landscaping, add less impervious surface that leads to flooding and pollutant transport to waterways, and consume less agricultural land and sensitive habitat. VMT mitigation will also help build the walkable neighborhoods that people are clamoring for. Real estate surveys show a substantial mismatch between demand for homes in walkable neighborhoods and the supply of such homes. Supplying more walkable neighborhoods will help bring housing supply in line with demand, ultimately helping to contain housing prices 
while providing social, health, and livability benefits to residents. Reducing VMT also helps reduce greenhouse gas emissions and slow climate change. Transportation produces half of the greenhouse gas emissions in California once oil extraction, piping, and refining are accounted for. The California Air Resources Board has determined that all of the vehicle efficiency improvements, zero emissions vehicle deployment, and decarbonization of electricity that we might be able to achieve in the next few decades will not by itself be sufficient to achieve our science-based emissions reduction targets. We also need to reduce VMT per capita. Our present approaches for doing so don't have us on track. The blue line in this graph shows CO2 per capita. Hitting our SB375 targets would require that line to hit the green dots in 2020 and 2035. And even hitting those SB375 targets wouldn't get us all the way down to emissions levels required by SB32. More is going to be needed to achieve the emissions reduction targets enshrined in state law. A recent report by CARB states, quote, California will not achieve the necessary greenhouse gas emissions reductions to meet mandates for 2030 and beyond without significant changes to how communities and transportation systems are planned, funded, and built. SB 743 will need to play a substantial role in affecting those changes. So how will using VMT and CEQA help achieve all this? First, a lot of future projects will be inherently low in VMT. Other projects would generate above threshold VMT, but will mitigate that VMT to less than significant levels. Still other projects will generate above threshold VMT and will reduce VMT to the extent feasible through mitigation, but not all the way to less than significant levels. That development can move forward with a statement of overriding considerations. California will need more development of the first type and will need the VMT mitigation from the second and third type in order to achieve our greenhouse gas emissions targets and all of the other benefits we've discussed. Several major California cities have already shifted to VMT and others are in the process of shifting. Research and reports backing the statements in this presentation, as well as other resources for implementing the change to VMT, can be found on OPR's website at this address.